we are talking about the uh, the beautiful woman of God, her supernatural crowns and gowns. First off, I want to say this. Um, when we deal with uh, crowns, you got to understand crowns represent the promotions you receive. The things that uh, you are given according to right behavior, right words, right decisions, right time spent, right investment. Crowns is always where there is an elevation or God places a signature upon you in the spirit. Let me just say this to you. A crown in the spirit is viewed by demon spirits. They could see if you're crowned. That means that you have accomplished a level of warfare correctly. You have overcame. A crown means that you have finished something that God has entrusted to you. Now, a gown is different. A gown is, 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 um, the gown, it means, now I want you to always remember this. Gown is an apparel that shows the quality of person you are. Remember, people wear gowns at uh, different uh, special occasions. And sometimes people wear gowns at home. It's to show the quality of person you are. A gown is also representing that you are delivered from devils. A gown represents you are delivered from sin. In Isaiah 61, it talks about the gown of salvation, the robe of righteousness. The gown is of salvation, of deliverance. Meaning that you are set free meaning that you're delivered, meaning that Satan has no power over you, nor have you given Satan any power over you. Crowns and gowns are both a clear picture of a woman that belongs completely to the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the Holy Spirit rules her, controls her. The world is not her interest. The word is her interest. And every single day, this woman gets up and she does the repetition of seeking God afresh. She repeats seeking God. She does not move off of yesterday's success. If she moves off of yesterday's success, it is to activate today's pursuit. The only time she's dwelling on yesterday's success is for her to identify what she has already carried, accomplished, and what she could build off of today. The supernatural beautiful woman of God with supernatural crowns and gowns. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 27. It says that she looketh well to her, to the ways of her household, and she does not eat the bread of idleness. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 27 says that she looketh well to the ways of her household and she eateth not the bread of idleness. Saints, this text so powerful because it's talking about this woman, she looketh well to the ways of her household. Now, saints, I, I want to teach something that you never heard before. She looketh, look at where the Bible magnifies what she's doing. She looketh, 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 look. Here we go with eyes. Here we go again with eyes. 
I've taught you so strong about the eyes, how it's determining what type of person you become, what type of things you do. Look at where her eyes is. Her eyes ain't being led by the devil. She's looking to the ways of her household. Now watch this here. The Bible says that she looketh well. Now well is also used when it's determining the conditions of someone. They'll say someone is not well, which means that they're sick. So when the Bible says that she looketh well, that means that she could also have a temptation to look if sick. That means that her looks, her focus is is, is out of the sickness realm of Satan. Because she's sick mentally, it's guiding what she looks at. She looketh well. See, her looking is in wellness, it's not in sickness. If it's in sickness, then that means that Satan could govern it and deceive her. But her look her look is in wellness. That means that the Holy Spirit has made her whole and this is determining her look. So now the Holy Spirit is governing how her focus is flowing. It's not sin. It's not jealousy. It's not envy. It's not bitterness. Resentment is not lust. It's not hatred. It's not comparison. It's not insecurity. It's not fear. It's not anxiety. It's not worry. It's not competition. It is well. The wellness of God is governing how she look at things and what she's looking at. Wholeness, not brokenness. Many women are broken. And so they don't look well. They look hell. Because hell is determining what they look at. Demons are determining their focus. The Bible says she looketh well to the ways of her household. Now look at what she's doing. Her focus is on her household. Now I want to say this to you. She is family driven. Which means, who is her family? Those that do the will of the Father. She is looking at who God has placed in her presence, not who she want to hang around, not who she used to hang around. She's looking at who did God pick me around in this season of my life? Who's here? Not who I need to reach out for, not who I need to call on the phone. Who is in my current setup of family? Meaning that God has placed these people around me. Children of God, let me just tell you something. When God is using somebody and you living with them, you will be a plum fool to treat them like they your enemy. Well, prophet, they don't like you. Listen. You got to learn how to move with the wisdom of a servant. You got to recognize when people are in your life to help you. They're not in your life to connect to your prophet. God dang. <laughs> God dang. See, you, 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 you see, that's what happened when you don't got wisdom. You try to link people to stuff that you think you, you try. No, no, no. They're not in your life for that. They're in your life for this. Let them stay in that department. Department utilize them.
that departmentalize them. Pick them up, sanctify them. They giving you a place to live. You trying to connect them to your prophet, but that's not the their part they're supposed to play. Just let them give you a place to live. Because if you recognize throughout the course of your life, when you try to um, overlap people, you see how conflicts start happening. Because they don't even got the grace to hear you. Can you recognize when somebody when, 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 when somebody doesn't have the grace to hear you? Saints, do you know why I kick people out of my life? I kick them out of my life because they won't leave. I kick their ass out because I'm like, you don't got the grace to hear me. We not going to fight this out. Don't worry. If you like hot barbecue skin for eternity, that's fine. I might come down and visit and watch. If you like being on the grill, being cooked, that's fine. You got to recognize when people don't have the grace to hear you. If you ain't got the grace to hear, then the only thing that can result is combat. Combativeness is when someone doesn't have the grace in operation to receive you. You have to recognize in your life when people are playing a certain part, they're there to help you out living arrangements. They're there to help you with your child. Don't overlap their focus. Keep them where they are and let them help you. There are going to be times in life where people that will enter into your life will hate your God. And they will hate you. But your God is inside of you making them have a desire to help you. They don't, they don't love you. Because the only way you can love is through God. Do you know the Lord was giving me a powerful revelation? I, I touched on it briefly one time. But uh, many people say, I love you. The word love is not just an action or an attitude or a mindset. The word love is another name of God. I keep telling you, that's why I got on my page, I am love. Love is another name. For God, you know the name of Jesus, a name for God, Jehovah, name for God, Adonai, the Lord, name for God, Jehovah Sidkin, you righteousness, name for God, Jehovah Rapha Hila, name for God, Jehovah Elo, uh, Elohim, name for God. Love is another one of his names. So when you see an ungodly person saying, I love my children. That's a lie. Because you just said, I God my children. And we know that they don't be raising their children to fear God. The same way if a husband say, I love my wife. You lie. Because the only way he could love his wife is if he God his wife. So that means that he has to be possessed by God to even go to that realm. The same way when people say, man, I just love my man of God. That's how you know. That it's possible for you to deceive yourself because how do you end up ever fighting them? Betraying them, denying them, scorning them, disagreeing with them. How? Because if you had truly loved them, that means that God would have had possessed you to deal with them. 
Saints, I want you to catch this and you're going to be shocked by this. God owned Lucifer in eternity, but did not possess Lucifer in eternity. Michael let God possess him. Gabriel let God possess him. See, God owned the one third of the angels that turned their back on God, but God wasn't able to possess them. They were not going to let themselves be controlled by God. So they could not love God because that would mean that they were possessed. I love him, I, I love him because he first loved me. I, I love him, I love him. Because he first loved me. See, love, love is a word that has been used so frequently by unauthorized users. Don't tell me you love me if you're not possessed with the Holy Ghost. Because you don't have the capacity, the ability, the revelation of how love will work. Love does no harm. So you will never find yourself harming my focus, my mentality, my vision, my presence. If you love. Because God will not work through you to do that. So you could say that Elisha loved Elijah because while he's in the presence of Elijah, everything that Elisha says is helping Elijah. It is God inside of Elisha encouraging Elijah. Elijah said, I'm going over here by myself. Elisha said, no, I'll go with you. That's God talking. That helped Elijah. Imagine if Elisha said, Okay, chief, I'll see you when you get back. Elijah would have went with a broken heart. Nobody wants to be with me. He didn't even volunteer. He didn't even fight to come. Nobody wants to be with me. And remember, if you look at the life of Elijah, like I told you, Elijah cried out to God and said, I'm the only prophet left, which means that he felt like there was no support. And now Elisha is not only owned by God, but possessed by God. And Elisha says, I'll go with you. The same way God told Moses, I'll go with you. You notice Elisha is echoing the same thing that God told Moses face to face. Because Elisha is possessed. There are a lot of you all that become owned by God, but you never become possessed by God. And it equals deception. You have to pick a path that makes you lunatic because you have to convince yourself of a false sense of righteousness, a false sense of eternal life, a false sense of salvation. Because when God owns you, it is simply that he has taken government over his creation. But when he possesses you, you respect his government. When he possesses you, you respect his creativity to make you. If you look at possession, it has nothing to do with God. It has everything to do with you now. 
recognizing his Godship. David is owned as a king, but he becomes possessed with the kingly anointing. He's owned as king, but becomes possessed with the kingly anointing. Many people get owned, but they never get possessed. And when you don't get possessed, the state of the man is worse than before. Because seven more wicked spirits know that your house is swept cleaned by the owner. You, a lot of people didn't catch what Jesus was saying. He was saying when a man is owned, his house is swept clean, meaning that it's vacancy. The seven more wicked spirits, they come back because they recognize he's not letting himself be possessed. You know, I was... Uh, I was in the shower and the Lord said something to me scary. He said, son, over the course of your life, you have not met a lot of people that I possess. He said, I sent you to a lot of people to train them so that they could create an atmosphere for me to come and possess them. He said, I sent you to people to talk to them, so to condition their minds, to prepare them for my coming. He said, but you have not met many people that I possess. This is why men of God go through disappointment. This is why men of God, there's men of God, not, 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 I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about all across the world. There are men of God that go through disappointment and they're stunned. They're like, what, what went wrong with the person? And they don't understand the person was being trained to be possessed. They were not possessed. Because once you become possessed, when Jesus is at the cross, John, you're right there. See, John was the only man possessed. In the Gospels. Whoa. That's a loaded statement. And you never heard that before like that. John was the only man possessed in the discipleship. You notice Philip tells Jesus, just show us the Father, that'll be sufficient for us. He's not possessed. Jesus said, He's that sees me, sees the Father. But the only way Philip could see that is if he was possessed. Thomas says, I do not believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Wow. He said, I need to see evidence. Y'all not going to play with me. I know how y'all do. Y'all like to be super spiritual. You think you're prophetic. Well, I ain't got time for the bull crap. I ain't got time to waste. Unless he show up and I see the holes in his hands and feet, I don't believe. You understand the sarcasm of Thomas? Thomas was a plum fool. He spoke with such arrogance. And do you understand the Holy Ghost is right there watching Thomas? He's not in Thomas. Thomas is not possessed. And Thomas talks with such foolishness and folly. When you're not possessed by the Holy Ghost, you will speak the words of death. The devil will use your mouth to say things that later on you would regret it. You will even deny that you said it. Thomas tells the son of God, I don't believe anything that you told me when you was 30 years old. You told us when you was 29, 28, you talked to us in secret. I don't believe nothing that you spent hours telling us. He looks at the other men. Imagine if they 
had believed him too and said, yeah, Thomas, you're right. He not only is corrupt, but he's attempting to corrupt the other men that Jesus trained and tell him, I don't believe nothing that he told us. You believe him? Well, I don't believe unless I see. I'm giving you examples of what happens when you're trained and not possessed. You're still an enemy of God. The Lord told me, he said, it was over an hour ago. Over two hours ago. Probably like an hour and a half ago. He said, you have not met many people that I possess. Say, I sent you to train people. I sent you to condition people for my coming. But you have not met many people that I possess. You can be owned and not possess. You can be owned and not possess. You can be owned and not possess. And when you're not possessed, there's seven more wicked spirits that come back to your house. And they enter inside of your house. And the state of the man is worse than ever before, which means that you will do something that is horrible. You'll do something that you never saw yourself doing. The reason why they put Miriam out of the camp for about seven days was because she was demon possessed. God rid her of her demons after those seven days. Her house was swept clean all over again so that she could learn and so that she could officially be possessed. You never heard this before because I'm talking to you of my own accord. The body of prophet Joshua Holmes is just possessed by me. I'm telling you so you could understand my Bible and my word, which was inspired by me. I sent my spirit to write this story. You would not know what happened unless I tell you because I and Miriam were the only ones that saw each other during that duration of time. Moses didn't see her. Nobody saw her but me and her. The possession happens when you let your will say yes to mine. 